my screen. All right, do you see the screen here? Give me a one in the chat if you see the screen. Carlton, SAS, Columbia, SAS, online contracts. Carlton, awesome, awesome. Grady, Dave. So listen, listen to me. <laughs> Hear me now, listen to me later. This is gonna be the most powerful and actionable masterclass you have ever attended and definitely have ever attended this year. So I'm so excited that you guys are here. Coletta, B2P SaaS Healthcare, you are my people. So thank you for your time. I promise you're gonna get a ton of value from here. So type in the chat if you haven't already, what business are you in? Where are you in from? Tino created a new supply chain. Awesome, awesome. Jeffrey, welcome. James, awesome. Bob, oh my gosh, fantastic. Everybody is here today. Beautiful people. Okay, so um, ChatGPT isn't going to save you with this. It's going to help you, but it's not going to save you for sure. Uh, your, your marketing person won't save you from positioning, and the best salespeople you have won't save you. Uh, so what will? So you may think that you have a sales and marketing problem, but really what you guys have is a positioning problem we're gonna be talking about. Because most sales and marketing challenges aren't really sales and marketing challenges. Um, it's a positioning uh, problem and positioning equals story and story equals strategy. This is what we're gonna be talking about today, the five shifts. So the five shifts that you need to take that is going to help you attract ideal customers and grow your business through better positioning. So I'm really grateful that you were here. Um, we have the privilege of working with a lot of CEOs in your space, SaaS, certainly, um, that have used these five shifts to be successful. And I'm gonna be giving these to you today, plus an awesome uh, free download, actually, of the magnetic messaging framework that will definitely, if you use it, will upgrade your website and allow you to convert a lot more people to uh, your to your at bats, to your conversations, to your sales. So the stakes are super high, as you know. I think I read a statistic that about half businesses are going to fail in five years, and this is actually they have failed. Um, and we know the market is shifting. There's a steep decline in win rates across regions. Marketing is a money pit because a lot of marketing is not done right because the positioning is off. Perfect deals are being lost to indecision. Teams are misaligned. VC funding is harder to get than for many, many years and businesses are failing. So uh, I'm really glad you guys are here because it's more than just rebranding or prettifying your, your website because often that does nothing for sales. All right. So uh, if you know who your ideal customer is, and I hope that you do, I want you to put your virtual arm around them, give them a cup of coffee and type in the chat right now, who is your ideal customer? Because arguably how well you understand your customer, your ideal customer is your biggest competitive advantage. And this is critical about what we're talking about today is positioning. So type in the chat, who is your ideal customer? Describe them. The person you have your arm around, you've just given a cup of coffee to, who are they? Uh, type that in the chat. All right, let's see. Type it in the chat. Grady, distributor of parts, event organizers, personal injury litigation attorneys, 20 to 20 users in what space is that, Kalita? Supermarkets, great. Who specifically? Just really get clear on who your ideal customer is. Carlton, service-based businesses who want to build big businesses. CHROs, mid-sized, fast-growing companies. Mid-market enterprise VP data, like any kind of company, any industry, uh, pre-T, or is it a certain industry? Awesome, awesome. Hello, Vitaly. Mental health care and addiction treatment. Wonderful. Okay, CFO or director of receivables for what kind of company, John? Really be specific here. Uh, this is a masterclass. I want you to get actionable value from this. And the only way you're gonna get actionable value is if through this work today about positioning, you have it really clear who your ideal customer is. All right, so who is this for? If you're here today, you'll be my people if you're a CEO who's bringing an innovation to their customers. So give me a, a two in the chat if you're bringing innovation to customers. This is for CEOs who are committed 
to their vision for the business. Hopefully you're committed. If you're not committed, this is not for you. CEOs of early stage or growth stage companies plateauing in the two to 50 million range who want to level up. If that's you, you're in the right place. CEOs whose success depends on winning against the status quo. If that's you, you should put a two in the chat because you are bringing innovation to the market. CEOs who are able to invest time and money into the business because these things are important to you. All right, this is for, so if this is not you, feel free to end this call, bow out, close the browser and leave because these, if you're here, these are, you are my people here. All right, um, my promise to you, by the way, if you can't stay, there will be a recording sent out to you, but two things are gonna happen. One is that you could book a call with me a free 30 minute call on the CEO of Pitch Kitchen, but also there's gonna be a magnetic messaging framework download only for the participants today. That's gonna to be launched about 30 minutes from now. You're gonna be able to download that in this session. Uh, all right, so here's my promise to you in the next 45 minutes. In the next 45 minutes, we're gonna talk about how to nail your sales message, even if your solution is sophisticated, complicated, needs to be demoed, and your prospects don't even know that they need it how to turn your sales presentations into buying conversations, even if your customers or prospects weren't even looking for your solution. Why it's really game over for traditional marketing strategies if your positioning is incorrect, and how to close more deals even in this market, which is arguably a recession in a cash-strapped market, uh, and how to attract ideal customers and close them without adding extra headcount uh, uh, hiring extra salespeople necessarily, or certainly without hiring a full-time chief marketing officer. All right. So this is my promise to you that, hello, Scott. Hello, uh, Jeffrey. Just checking at the chat here. All right. So uh, we're going to be handing out in about 26 minutes, the magnetic messaging framework template for the most highly converting B2B websites. If you look at the top 100 B2B websites. This is the framework that they're going to use. You're going to want to look at this. We're going to be handing this out uh, at the end. Welcome, Ian. Welcome, Kiran Moataz. Oh my gosh, you guys are beautiful. And I am so excited that you're here. So, this is what we're going to talk about the five shifts for powerful positioning, how smart CEOs scale sales without adding extra staff or even hiring a chief, a uh, full time chief marketing officer. All right. So, but first, is this you? Is this your world where you've got an amazing solution, but prospects don't really understand it, how it works, how they would use it, or why they need it? Is this you where prospects are comparing your solution to the other solutions that have nothing to do with what you're selling? then you're in the right place. If you and your sales reps are working so, so hard explaining what your product is and why anyone should care, you're in the right place. If you, if what you're selling really should be a no-brainer for people, your ideal customers who before, again, you've got your arm around them, um, and you're thinking to yourself, if they only knew the power of what it could do for them, it would be a no-brainer, but they don't know. If you have a marketer doing a lot of marketing, but it's not converting into sales, you're in the right place. If your demos aren't resulting in sales, you're in the right place. If you've read a lot of these books, by the way, Seth Godin, This Is Marketing, Donald Miller, Build a Storing Brand, April Dunford, obviously awesome. These are amazing books where you've, you've read these books, you know already the formula, but if you look at your homepage, you really haven't made the shifts, then you're in the right place. If you've got salespeople working for you and they're singing from a different hymn sheet, some are saying perhaps we're the best, some are saying we're the only, but nobody is saying the same thing. Or a really scary version, you're afraid to invest in marketing or hire sales reps because you're not feeling confident about your positioning, you're in the right place. If you're spending money on a website developer and a social per media person, a PPC person, a graphics gal, but you seem to be lacking a single, clear, simple, compelling story that attracts the right customers in the conversation, and gets them predisposed to buy, then you're in the right place. If you're using sales presentations that look a little bit like this, like math textbooks with page numbers and white backgrounds, 
you're in the right place, sending out presentations that nobody's responding to. If you're using language on your website like this, software platform drives transparent, data-driven, blah, 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 that means nothing to nobody, you're in the right place. This is another example, creating innovative workflow technologies that drive, forget it, this doesn't work. If this is your world, if you're using any of this language that's on my screen here, unified solution, modern technologies, blah, 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 uh, you're in the right place. So just give me, if you're here, give me a, a uh, I don't know, a, a, a one in the chat if any of these is resonating with you, uh, where you're shoving more data at, at people, uh, at your ideal customers, competitive matrices, case studies, ROI calculators, but it isn't actually helping you convert more customers, you're in the right place. If you look at your sales process where every solution you're selling is sophisticated, customer deals are complicated, value proposition is customized, and you're thinking to yourself, well, how can our messaging and positioning be simple? Well, you're in the right place. Seeing your pipeline go up, close deals, stagnate or go down, you're in the right place. All right. Bottom line, got a lot of ones here. Humphrey, Pretty, Amy, Uma, Bob, Rama, Vitali, Alex, Mark, John, Carlton, Rama. Absolutely uh, got a one because those are resonating with you. You're dealing with those situations, or at least some of them. Great news for you. The good news is those are symptoms. Once you, you fix the real problem, the real problem is around positioning. We're going to talk about that. Um, then you will uh, fix all those problems. And it's because you haven't made these five shifts. And these five shifts have to do with your positioning. So once you do make these shifts, five things will happen. You'll have complete confidence in every dollar you're spending on marketing. You're going to lead your category, be the leader, and accelerate the qualifications of deals in your pipeline. Your leadership team and your the people you rely on every day to be successful will be aligned all on the same page. Presentations will be unforgettable, leaving your customers talking for a change. And they'll really become conversations that are going to be opening minds and helping you close deals. Your prospects will be showing up to your first conversation with them predisposed to buy. Really powerful. And I'm so excited to share these five shifts with you. If you're still with me and excited, give me a, a nine in the chat if you're with me. All right. So who am I? I'm Greg Rosner, the CEO of Pitch Kitchen, and I help CEOs lead their categories, fix their bad websites, turn sales presentations into buying conversations, turn ineffective marketing into sales enablement, all through the fundamental five shifts we're going to be talking about today without hiring a full-time CMO. All right, so I'm a fractional CMO for two companies. My agency Pitch Kitchen offers services that we're gonna be talking about today, just so you know, but you don't need to use those services. I'm handing out to you necessarily uh, a framework today. We have, um, uh, in my whole career, I've spent my career really selling. I didn't come to this as a marketer. I came to this as a seller. And if you're a seller, a lot of marketers you know haven't sold anything to anybody. I have. I've sold millions of dollars with enterprise software and services. And I know that the presentations that I got from marketing with white backgrounds and logos on it and pictures and diagrams did nothing to help me sell. And I realized that what really helps sell is having the right conversations and slides that foster those conversations. And then what I learned uh, in the last few years, it's the positioning of the company that allows you to have those right conversations and selling. And the presentations we developed, the frameworks, the websites have helped our clients earn hundreds of millions of dollars. And I'm super, uh, what's the word, uh, proud. And I am grateful to have helped them become the unicorns that they have. Um, all right, so let's jump into this. The five shifts for powerful positioning, how smart CEOs scale sales without adding staff. Let's jump into this. Grady, Uma, Amy, Mark. All right, all right. John and Chris has just joined as well. Oh my gosh, beautiful people are here. Oh my gosh. All right, number one, if you want, uh, if you want to really focus on positioning, the first shift that you need to make is lead an uprising, lead a rebellion. What am I talking about, lead a rebellion? Well, um, are you selling an innovation? Give me a three in the chat if you're selling an innovation. 
Roman, Scott, Carlton, Uma, Amy, you're all selling innovation. Awesome. So if you're selling innovation, that means that your innovation requires change, doesn't it? Uh, requires change. So if you are coming in there with your fancy pants solution, your innovation, think about it from your customer's perspective. You're really the enemy of the status quo and the status quo may be very safe for them. So the way that you bring your innovation to customers has to change. You can't take the old way approach, which is an arrogant expert making claims about how we're the best and here's why we're the best. People don't react to that anymore. There's too much noise. You need to come at this by leading rebellion against the status quo that encourages your people to make the change that they need to make. Where you're basically saying the old way is dead. It doesn't work anymore. There are going to be winners and they're going to be losers and winners take this new approach that our product confers advantage to. This is the new way in helping you lead a rebellion. Look at Gong did. They take this game over narrative where goodbye opinions, hello reality. And this speaks to their product, but more importantly, a very clear and clever way to draw a distinction between the old way and the new way. So type in the chat here if you know what you're re rebelling against. Come on, let me see. If you're selling an innovation, what are you rebelling against? What are you leading an uprising against? Type in the chat for me. Gene, Mona, Ian, Palik, Alex, John, Bob, Tom, Chris. What are you leading a rebellion, uprising against? The thing that doesn't work anymore. Uh, mark change. Now that's not good enough. What does that mean? Change is the rebellion. Government procurement, free software. So that's interesting. Bob, you're rebelling against free software. Ian, legacy software. Uh, Dan, complacency. Complacency about what? Let's be clear. Uh, Dan, crappy hires. I love that. We all know what that would mean for a business. Mark, existing systems. What's the problem? Existing systems are great. What, what's wrong with existing systems? All right. Sales templates. Yes. Alex, looking at organizations through org charts. Uma, assumption that change is slow. Coletta, using multiple software solutions instead of one. Well, um, fine, that's great. So your change does require, uh, your innovation requires change. So what is your contrarian ideology? What do you believe? What do you stand, what do you stand for that requires people to change? What are you telling people to stop doing and what are you telling them to start doing this is what the rebellion is about coming from the coach the trusted advisor type in the chat if you know what do you want people to stop doing so like pretty stop being inefficient with your data operations maybe but like how do you do that you got to run your business uh carlton stop failure is not required i don't know what that means what do you want people to stop doing type in the chat what do you want people to start doing What's the approach, the method, the, the a mindset that people need to take uh, that your product confers advantage to if they want to play the game that way and want to win that way? You need to be clear on what rebellion you are leading, what uprising you are creating, what you want people to start and stop. Let's look at a couple examples. All right. The old way for ReadyWorks Health, um, the old way is checklists for doctors and nurses to run through their machines, the machine that goes beep to just write the date and time, the, the drug box lock, whatever. That's the old way. And this doesn't work because it has doctors and nurses spending time with paper instead of with patients. The new way is smart forms. And by the way, ReadyWorks sells a product that is a smart form for hospitals. So this is a very good way to talk about innovation by uh, attacking the old way and framing the new way. So go on, guys, lead an uprising for your industry and, and put a flag in the ground. And guess what? Attack the status quo. Attack um, complex systems, Rama. Attack, um, uh, start driving hyper-aggressive pricing. I don't know what that means. Attack the old way and uh, lead your customers to the new way. So take a look at some of these hashtags. And we'll see if you guys have a hashtag. Type it in the comments if you do. There's something that these great hashtags have, and I'm not making a political comment here about Make America Great Again, but recognize great marketing when you see it. That hashtag in and of itself 
creates a story and leads people to something. So what do all of these hashtags have in common? What do these have in common? Type in the chat. So Rama, blockchain. Yes. Um, so what these all have in common uh, is these are, come on guys, you can figure it out. What do these have in common? Own your tomorrow. That's from Charles Schwab. Uh, start with why. Simon Sinek, trust your source. Wall Street Journal, just do it. Nike, what do these have in common? Yes, Dan, action verb. Yes, it asks people to do something. When you're, you know, you're selling transformation, you're not selling your product, you need to ask people to do something and to get to that place that they want to go. This ties into the rebellion. So if this is making sense to you, type in the comments, make sense, and we can move on. So be resilient. A little vague uh, what that means, why, I mean, sure, but, but who cares? All right. So think about your customers now, the people you have your arm around. Where on the one side of the curve, the risk of changing is is so big for them that they uh, don't want to make a change. And on the right side of this curve, the risk of doing nothing is so big that if they don't do anything, bad things will happen. So this is really important because you're not going to sell to the people on the left side of the curve, but you will be able to sell to people on the right side and you will be able to influence people who are on the top of this curve and the left. But if you really think about it, if you're selling to people and positioning your product solution, you're the enemy of those people. So just be clear who you're selling to. So what is your battle cry in three or four words? Type in the chat. Just watch what you need. I don't know. It's vague. Type in your battle cry with a hashtag in three or four words, starting with a verb, and type in what your business is so we have some context. All right. So here's a great example. Zoom info hit your number. Love that. What a great one. Because this isn't about Zoom info, their hashtag. This is about their customers, the heroes of the story, who Zoom info is helping hit their number through the data that they sell. So if this is making sense, type in the comments, makes sense. Stop buying, start sourcing. Like that. Like that. Really good, Chris. Dave, be exciting. Marketing, be exciting. Marketing content, maybe. All right. So the bad news, some of you here aren't going to make it. And that's just the reality. We saw some of the statistics. A lot of SaaS companies fail by year three. And it's not because the products aren't great. It's not because the solutions aren't awesome. It's because the positioning is off. Real quick story. Jeff Aronson, CEO of EquipX. Confusing marketing content. Salespeople really weren't selling very well. And they were great salespeople. Losing deals to no decision, inaction. Um, this is an example of the before website. Really, you know, nice picture, but, you know, totally a failure from a what is it? How does it help me? Afterwards, using leading this rebellion in the market, 3x their revenue, 6x their pipeline in four months, and so, so grateful the business is materializing. This is the after where it's really clear what the problem is, the underutilized equipment, turning that into an optimized health system. They're selling SaaS, by the way. The call to action is very clear about what the value is. It's not learn more. It's, it's very, very clear. Awesome. Hello, Armin, Ender, John. Welcome. So uh, type in the chat here, yes or no. Is leading an uprising uh, a crazy idea for your, your positioning in your business? Yes or no? Is it a crazy idea? Is it a ridiculous idea to lead an uprising given that you're selling an innovation? All right. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Krita, Carlton, Humphrey, No, Coletta, Mike, Chris, <laughs> and awesome. Number two, start with the problem. So why not start with your solution? I bet you're all excited about your innovation, um, but why, why, not, why not start with your innovation? So here's the reason why you shouldn't start. What do you see here? Anyone want to comment? What do you see here? You probably have a lot of competition in your industry as well, a lot of different solutions that maybe even don't aren't really exactly the same as what you're offering. There is way too much noise, way too much noise. And that's why starting with your solution doesn't work. It doesn't work because it doesn't answer these three questions. Why should they change? Why should they change now? And why should they change with you? And these questions aren't answered when you're doing solution marketing. So focusing today on your positioning, you are going to get lost in this chasm 
uh, selling to customers if you don't fix your positioning, where the folks who the risk of changing is much greater than the risk of doing nothing. You can't be selling to those people on the left side. You need to be educating people up on the curve, influencing people on the top of the curve, and encouraging those people who are on the right side of that curve where the risk of doing nothing is, is, is unsustainable for their business. So let's just check in with you with how well you understand, not your solution, I'm sure you understand everything about your solution, but type in the comments, uh, what is the number one problem that you solve for your customers? This is a trick question. It's very hard to do, believe it or not. But if you can do this, um, bonus points, but this is hard. Type in the chat, what is the number one problem you solve for your customers? All right, uh, D Scott, divorce is financially and emotionally devastating. Absolutely. Uh, that's a fact. That's not a problem. Uh, what is the problem that you solve? Do you solve? Do you get them remarried again? So what is the problem you solve? Um, Dan, crappy hires. That's a problem. Um, Grady, inefficiency about what? Ian, we reduce collection costs. So that's what you do. So collection costs is a problem. Maybe that's just a fact of life. And I bet most of the market is happy paying collection costs. So why is that a problem? Um, Tom, speed of delivery of deposition assets. So what's the problem with the speed, slow delivery of deposition assets? Why is that a problem? What is the problem there? So you really need to get clear on the problem, the number one or three problems your customers have. And if you're not clear on this, your positioning is going to be off. Ian, lengthy asset downtime. So, so what? So this asset downtime, why is that a problem? Carlton, grow their business 250K annually. Carlton, I'm sorry, that's not a problem. That's a goal. That's something to achieve. And so no, you really need to get clear what the difference is between a problem and a goal. You all see there's a huge difference and people don't buy your solution to attain goals. Why do people buy your solution, your innovation? Type in the chat if you know why people buy your solution. All right, um, Coletta, staff retention. Yes, uh, people buy to solve their problem. Yes, so if you're not clear in your on your homepage of what the number one problem is that you're solving, your positioning is way off and you're not gonna be successful. In fact, I come upon so many sites that I go as you go to their, their homepage and you're like, WTF does this company do? This is a ChatGPT engine, by the way. What WTF does this company do? And ChatGPT will take a guess at what that company does. And I do it just for fun because even ChatGPT can't figure out what a lot of these companies do because it's just, it's just wrong. People are writing content that makes no sense. And if it makes no sense, the confused mind just says no. Um, I'm just going to stick doing with our with the way that we're doing things today. And we're just not going to change. Bottom line is nobody cares about your solution. Nobody cares about your why or your company when you were founded. What do your customers really care about? Type in the comments here. What, Gene, welcome. What does your customers really care about? What do they care about? Type in the comments, what do they care about? Yes, getting results, growing their business, becoming more profitable. So if you're starting with your solution, why is that a problem? Because you can tell me, why is it a problem if you're starting with your solution? Because nobody cares, nobody cares about it. All right, so um, look, we're gonna just fast forward here because we have a lot to cover. If this makes sense to you, just type in the comment, makes sense. You gotta be starting with the problem. Type in the comments, makes sense. Awesome, Alex, Carlton, John, thumbs up from Joseph. All right, so let's get to number three, make your customer the hero. Now, this sounds great, right? Oh yeah, our customers are the hero. They, they pay us, so we love them and they're the hero. But let's just take the kimono off here for a second. If I go to your website right now, your homepage, what is it in love with? Be honest. What is your homepage obsessed with? Okay. If it sounds like bringing clarity to risk, 
Guess what Acuities is obsessed with or in love with? Acuities in love with their own solution. All right. So this is what happens. Every CEO says, yeah, let's do that. Let's make our customers the hero. Every marketer says, yeah, I can do that for you. The reality is nobody has a freaking idea about actually how to do that in the writing, in the design, in the content. So who's the hero on your homepage right now? And I can promise you, if you have any messaging where you're saying our mission is to be the most trusted or we're the future of or we're disrupting or we're an innovation, I can promise you that you're not making your customer the hero. You have not made the shift here. So first of all, a lot of people here in this webinar, this masterclass today said that you're selling an innovation, right? My question to you is, says who? Who says that you're, sell you're selling an innovation? That's harsh. And I'm not just harsh because I'm from New York, but you say that it is, right? You, it's your judgment. It's not the market. So if you're using any of that language, you have not made the shift. Because if your website's obsessed with your innovative solution, this is what you look like on the left. You're a golem. You're not this attractive AI um, person. It's not a real person, by the way. But it's an AI drawing, as I'm sure you've seen Midjourney do. But this is what it looks like. So um, this is an example like of a website, IPMD, the before. If anyone knows what they're selling, type in the chat here but ai human interaction creating a better world for tomorrow you have no idea what this company sells but now the after give doctors superpowers bring emotional artificial intelligence to patient encounters all right i get it right away it's a telemedicine platform that has ai in, in embedded i get it right away but did you get that from here no because here starting with the solution making the product the hero of the story this is making the customer the hero of the story. All right, these are also some bad examples, but essentially the, the story, making your customer the hero of the story is really making you the trusted advisor and your voice in all of your messaging and marketing is how we make you better, not why we're the best, all right? So um, if, you're, uh, if they're the hero, what does that make you? Type in the chat, what does that make you, Tom, Oma? Moat, Taz, Carlton, Bob, what does that make you if if they're the hero? Gandalf, the sword, enabler of the hero. Yes, Moat, Taz, Dan, pretty. Yes, you're Gandalf. You are um, Obi-Wan. Yes, the brainy sidekick. Yes, absolutely. The helper, Moses, Superman's cape, Yoda. Love that. So <laughs> what are you really selling here? You know, if you think about your customer, they're in this world, they have the problem, they wanna to get to a place where they don't have that problem anymore. So what are you selling? You're selling what I call transformation. You're, you're selling change. And if you really make them the hero, forget that you are the guide. You're helping them get over this hump where you're educating, influencing, and encouraging them to make this change um, for those folks that realize the risk of doing nothing is too great. All right, so don't do it with facts because facts don't change people's minds. Uh, I launched this on LinkedIn, you probably saw that. Um, involve yourself deeply in your customer's story of change. And I'm a big Lion King fan, Rafiki, absolutely. So um, at the end of this webinar, we're offering five slots to talk, but you can, on the screen here, there's an offer button. You can see where you can do that if you can't stay. But we're also offering at the end that magnetic messaging framework. All right, so real quick about Trisha, a CEO, had a new product, new board, massive goals, could not differentiate in the market, failing to book new conversations, missing sales targets, completely frustrated with performance. After making these five shifts, demonstrated cost-effective delivery, confident about the story and marketing, winning way bigger deals much faster, got salespeople that are selling now on purpose. And this is a little bit what that looks like. She posted something on LinkedIn with this rebellion idea and making the customer the hero and was immediately actually getting book calls and, and business came through. So making your customer the hero is an essential shift you need to make with your positioning. All right. So if it would be a crazy idea to do this, um, just say yes or no in the chat. So I know you guys are tracking. Is it a crazy idea to make your customer the hero? And that means make you the trusted advisor? 
No. No, it's not a crazy idea. Oh, sorry. All right. Number four, the five shifts. Use a secret weapon. And the secret weapon here is a framework. And uh, you can download this framework here at the end of this webinar. But essentially, it has three parts. It's this game over positioning where you're leading a revolution. It's a heroic homepage revamp with 10 parts to it that really is a transformation story that your customers get involved with and you get involved with, with their tra transformation story. And it's a sales presentation that is a choose your own adventure style of sales presentation. So you're not having to explain anything. You're really having the right conversations. And we're going to be showing you these 12 conversations you guys need to be having. So you should really turn your website you know, into a conversion site. And this is the mindset you need to have. It's not about more content, more pages. In fact, the less pages, the better. Your site needs to be a conversion site having very specific things. So I'm sharing with you here some sites that really work well and why they work well. Because at the top of the page, it really speaks to what their customers want to do why they want to do it and what the call to action is just at the top the purpose of the text at the top is to get people curious about what that what's coming next and they should scroll down it really like this is a great old way versus new way uh mindset here that is awesome this is an old way textbooks are no longer enough that's really great uh goodbye spreadsheets hello connected information this totally works for this business it really helps get people curious about how they're going to end their life in spreadsheets and what does connected information mean? Awesome, awesome. So this is the magnetic messaging template. I'm going to let you guys download this. And you can see in the template, it has on the right side the reason what, what the text in the left really is from the uprising to the call to action to the transformation story to what your solution is as you scroll down the features and your authority and the stakes what happens if they don't do it right the plan of how they're going to get there social proof these are all the elements so you're going to want this and this is also a nice feature modern websites don't have forms they really have booking uh, or chat bots so you can always have a form after they select the date and time with three or four questions this is a much better way to have it instead of a form all right, so uh, this is, I think, a before, the before site for Trilio. Uh, like, if you look at this, what are they selling? Watch now, like, what's the call to action? Like, what do you want me to do? How do I use it? How does this help me? Why should I care? None of those questions are answered. This is so clear, get intelligent recovery. This is a backup and recovery solution that competes on the intelligent recovery side. And uh, it, it it's so much better and is allowing Trilio to uh, book a lot more business. And uh, this is an example to make your HOA smarter. That's great. Uh, this is really helping them. This is a startup, by the way. Uh, make cybersecurity simple, very, very clear what their rebellion is about, because cybersecurity is so, so, so complicated. Um, all right. So about your sales presentation, once people convert and they book the time with you, um, uh, you need to lay out uh, an agenda. And that agenda really should have three parts. The first part is you're talking about the challenges that they're having. Second part, you're talking about what it is you're selling. And the third part is how they could use it to get to where they want to go. And if you think about this is the structure of every natural presentation, and you should be able to dive into any part. Each part can have several pieces, but they're like battle cards. You've got to decide what conversations you need to have. This particular slide would go in that first part talking about the problem. And this is a problem discussion. How do you really know about your, your clinical skills or professional skills or cost of retention? This is a particular slide, but it gets prospects talking about the problem that they currently have and getting them to articulate the problem, not you. So you, when I say getting them to articulate it, not you, you need to move away from presentations that are telling people what they should think and get involved with presentations that you're asking people what they think and prompting them. That's why presentations like this, this is an example, if you're selling a platform that has many five parts, um, you need to ask which part 
would be most uh, would get you the most outcome or get you the outcome that that you need or make the biggest difference and you focus on that so in your demo you're not showing 101 things that your product or solution could do you're just showing the two things or the one thing that's going to move the needle for them uh, these are the 12 conversations that i have found uh, over doing thousands of sales presentations these are the only 12 uh, besides rapport. You can have a rapport conversation for sure about weather and COVID. But after that's over, you're going to have one of these 12. Uh, but they're in three parts, the problem, solution, and plan area. If you want to take a screenshot of this, definitely do that because this is going to help guide how your sales presentations need to be. So just to recap, the secret weapon is a magnetic messaging framework that has this game over positioning, heroic homepage revamp, and choose your own sales event choose your own adventure sales presentation all right hello asura 10 welcome welcome dave oma uh if that makes sense about using this framework uh for a secret, secret weapon type in the comments makes sense so how can you get the magnetic messaging download thank you for uh i'm going to put that on the screen in just a moment so number five, the fifth shift that you need to make is invest in outside expert help. Outside expert, not inside. Outside expert help. And why is that? Because take a look at this meme. I love Buzz Lightyear. But uh, what did he think prior to his relationship with, with Woody? And you can imagine a lot, you know, a lot of CEOs are just so wrapped up in their unique, unbelievable, innovative, revolutionary innovation providing a unique, complex, blah, 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 leveraging revolutionary tech, AI technology. But if you think about it, everyone is saying the same bull crap and that nobody understands anything there. It doesn't work. So when you're inside the box and really talking about your solution every day, it's really hard to see how customers see you. So if you look at CEOs that really have crossed this chasm, unicorns, they have hired outside marketing help. And, and I'll tell you a few reasons why. And this is Masood, by the way, uh, frustrated with sales, we're declining afterwards, tripled at bats, getting those at bat conversations, and doubled win rate in just two months after taking this approach. So here's the thing if you do not hire an outside expert, people, you're going to struggle to do this alone. Your marketers aren't paid to take an opposing view. Think about it. If you hire a marketing person, they're, they're going to do what you tell them to do. They're not gonna tell you the bad news, are they? Because they're paid not to tell you bad news. I mean, prove me wrong on that, all right? You're gonna go back and forth between very good options. You won't likely be using proven positioning frameworks, just what someone thinks might be a good idea. You'll, you're really struggling because you're gonna be stuck in the solution-driven idea pool instead of problem-driven idea pool that comes from an outside expert. Stuck with the inside baseball talk, the inside jargon, continuing to waste money on marketing that doesn't work. And waste time and people on de waste time and people on demos that do not close. This is what happens when you don't hire an outside expert. All of these CEOs have and are doing wildly successful right now in this economy, and I'm very proud of them. So I like to say don't hire marketers uh, because a lot of marketers haven't sold anything in their lives hire sales enablers that really understand what it takes to get someone who is afraid of making a change to a place where they're afraid of not making a change. All right, so this is what you need to win. You need to lead a rebellion, uprising. You need to start with the problem, make your customer the hero, use the secret weapon, and invest in outside expert help. Awesome, so let me put up here on the screen uh, this magnetic messaging framework. Here it is. Tell me if you can see this. It should be a little um, a column on the right side of your screen now, the handout. Give me a one in the chat if you're able to download it. Give me a one in the chat if you can download this. Great. So this was my promise to you, how to nail your sales message, even if your solution is complicated, how to turn your sales presentations into buying conversations, why it's game over for this traditional marketing strategy without nailing your positioning first, how to close more deals, even in a recession market, how to attract customers um, and close more deals. So now you have a choice. You can go it alone uh, or you can get help. And uh, here's what I have for you, that QR code you can snap with your phone if you see it here. And uh, you can book a 30 minute 
messaging and sales enablement assessment with me. Uh, and there's the QR code. And there's also in the top right of your screen, you can book that. The magnetic messaging framework you can download and uh, you can book this call. So on this call, we're going to do a few th things. We're going to discover really what's going right or in what's going wrong with your marketing, your positioning. We're going to discuss what you can do about it and get a game plan for getting it done. So it's not just a theory. You guys can be successful this year. All right. And so there's a catch. This is absolutely free. I've set aside five of these calls in the next week. This is absolutely free for you if you want to do it. Um, so if you're, it looks like some people are able to download it, Bob, right. So, uh, this is absolutely free, but there's a catch. There is a catch here. You guys should know about, uh, do not book a call. Uh, uh, do not, you can't, here's the QR code, but listen, do not book a call. It's not for everyone. If it's not for those who don't have a viable product to sell, if you don't have a viable product to sell, then this is not for you. It's not for those who aren't committed to your vision. If this is a nice to have, but you're not committed to making your business happen, please don't book the call with me. Two, uh, three, it's not for those who are, you're okay with where you are. Don't book the call. It's for folks that really want to get to the next level with their business. It's not for folks who aren't challenging the status quo for their industry. So if you're good selling just another minivan, as it were, do not book a call with me. I only work with CEOs who are selling breakthrough or innovative products. Um, this is not for those who can't or won't invest time and money in their business. So if this is you, please don't book a call with me. All right. So with that, I want to just ask a question here. Uh, for you guys. What what was the biggest thing that you got out of this webinar here? What was the, out of the five shifts, which was the shift that you think made the biggest, uh, will, you'll take action on that made the biggest impact for you? Uh, Alex, dropping off. Okay. Pretty. Customer's the hero. Um, <clears throat> lead a rebellion. Mike, yes. Dan, emphasizing the pain. And I say pain, they... Uh, let's talk about this for a minute, Dan, because I actually didn't talk about pain. I talked about the problem because you could be selling a problem that they don't currently have pain on. You're selling a problem that will call, cause future pain. And a lot of new business, new products, new innovations are solving problems that prevent future pain. So I would say uh, you do, emphasizing pain is okay but the, the right way to do it is emphasize and talk about the problem, which may or may not cause pain today. Does that make sense, Dan? Hope that you got that extension. Yes or no, Dan, does that make sense? So guess two, start a rebellion. Uma, make a customer the hero. Uh, Carlton, getting a sales enabler instead of just a marketer. Yes, awesome. Any comments or questions here? Anything that wasn't clear that you want me to talk about? Can you show the sales call checklist again? Yes. Good idea. Get a screenshot of this. Uh, this took like, I don't know, f doing about 3,000 sales presentations. 3,000 sales presentations garnered this right here. I developed with my team 3,000 sales presentations, and this is the pattern that we recognize. These are the sales conversations that you must have. Um, not at all one sitting, not at all one go, but if you miss one of these conversations, you're going to lose the sale. It's a base not covered. Take a screenshot of this. Awesome. So listen, I want you guys to be successful. You are my people. I can play for you some recordings I have uh, actually here of some customers that were wildly successful after making these shifts. But I want to just put on the screen here this QR code. If you want to book a time, please do it. I want to see you guys, you being really, really successful with your idea. I don't want to see you fail. There are a handful of people that really understand positioning. I'm one of them based on not just my experience from the sales industry, but from marketing, from graduating from one of the top design schools in the world. Uh, it's Cooper Union in New York a gazillion years ago, but a focus on design and communications to make sure that your innovation cuts through the noise, attracts ideal customers, and grows your business. That's where I come from. That's why I do what I do to help the, uh, the, the clients I serve, that we serve, uh, and cut through and cross the chasm. I hope you got uh, some value from this discussion. It sounds like some of you did. 
if you have any questions, just type them in the chat and uh, let's have a, a quick discussion about it. Cool Dip, this is amazing. Oh my gosh, you are amazing, Cool Dip. It's a 40 minute webinar. Yes, sorry I'm running over. Awesome, Gene, but that's what it is like. I appreciate you. I appreciate this time we have together. This is live. We are here together. And time is the only thing we can't get back. So I love you for taking time to spend with me to talk about what I think is one of the most important things you can do, which is refine your story, your positioning, and your strategy for your business so that you can be successful in what you're creating in the world. And what you're creating is probably something that's helping people, helping people solve their problems. That's why you're doing what you're doing. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Awesome. Oma, thank you very much. Ozeratine, thank you. John, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you guys. Uh, the role of testimonials. Dan, uh, we can follow up on that because I want to wrap up here and respect everyone's time. If you have to go, absolutely jump. Thank you, Prince. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Coletta. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Uh, been driving, but I learned a lot. Thank you. Daniel, danke, danke, Dan. Sprechen Sie Deutsch, Dan, absolutely. Rama, brilliant, thank you, thank you. Carlton, thank you, thank you, thank you. Rama, pretty, absolutely, thank you. You guys are awesome. Uh, I'd like to just finish here to say, um, keep on rocking in the free world and be awesome. We'll speak soon.